Hey, this is James McClendon with JMC Custom Knives. Uh, recently I was asked to uh, do a video on how I get my antler handles look like I do. Of course, you know, a lot of times you'll find these antlers and they they come like this. Now this one come from a pet store and it's pretty sun bleached. So all these handles here were, were sun bleached. So I'm going to go through the process of how I add color to these and uh, make them, uh, give them another dimension, if you will. Uh, the process involves stabilizing, which uh, I'm sure if you're not familiar with this is cactus juice. This is uh, sold for wood and this is other porous materials. Well, antler is porous material and it happens to lack the um, uh, stabilization process very well. So I'm going to walk you through the process of how to add color to these and give them some dimension and of course that's going to add value to your uh, project. Hey, there's one other thing I want to touch on real quick. Uh, it's when you pick, pick out your antlers. Uh, all antlers aren't created alike. Uh, when you you know, you look at a piece of antler like this, and you know it looks really good. Well, uh, one of the things you got to look at is uh, what's on the inside. And antlers are made up of two basic parts. You got a hard outer shell and a spongy center. And uh, when you've got an antler like this, where, where it's pretty thin. Uh, Working it unstabilized is really a bad idea because if you're um, sanding it down, you get into that pith, there's no, there's no support to it. It's just a big sponge, and it's also going to soak up everything that uh, touches it, any liquid. So uh, stabilization helps that. Uh, a lot of things affect that with a deer. Uh, it's diet, it's age, it's health. Uh, those things can affect uh, how those antlers grow. So when you're buying them, keep that in mind. Now on an antler base like this, that pith only comes in, uh, it's usually about an inch and a half, two inches over the base. And all of this down here is, is solid. So, uh, you know, keep that in mind when you're working it because you're going to hit that the, when you're cleaning that center out for your uh, handle tang or if you're doing a full tang you gotta keep all of that in mind with that PS. You, you really don't want that showing on your handle too much because it's not very attractive. Uh, so let's get back to the uh, process. We're going to start with wiping it down with some solvent. Just get that glue off. Okay, next I got some uh, leather dye. Now this is the alcohol-based dye. You can use the water, I suppose. Um, you just need to let that dry a little longer. Um, but the uh, alcohol dries really fast. I'm going to start off with a light brown on the bottom and a dark brown on the top. You can kind of see the way this stuff's acting. It's really soaking in. So we're going to let this uh, set for a few minutes and then clean it up. So 
So I've got my antlers, they're, they're dry now. Um, these were real, really dense, healthy uh, antlers. That deer will probably eat pretty good. That's the, uh, that's the good thing about when you buy antlers like this that aren't wild. These deer are fed, and they're fed high um, protein diets. So those that translate in a, in, into really dense antlers, which translates into a really good handle. Um, I'm seeing some cracks. It didn't really that die really didn't soak in too deep, um, but there are a few little cracks in it. So that's going to give it some character. And I cut it off because uh, I, I'll use this on a uh, another handle. Probably not this one. Uh, but I'll put these on the front of the bigger Bowie knives. So we're going to drop these into the uh, stabilizing solution, the cactus juice. And we're going to draw a vacuum. Now you might be noticing that I don't have a glass top on this. I bought this uh, off of eBay. And uh, it had a glass top or a acrylic top, and uh, I pulled it down to 25 inches and uh, went inside holding it there, come back out, and that top had cracked. It looked like a spider weld. Well, come to find out, uh, some of those uh, acrylic tops aren't, aren't uh, compatible with the resin. So uh, I went back and I made a new top out of steel for it. And uh, so I'm going to draw it down. And we're going to hold it. We're going to hold it there for a little while and let it suck all the, uh, all the air out. And uh, we'll come back to it in a minute. Okay, we got it out of the oven. Um, it's ready for the next step, which I'm going to put some uh, black dye on the top here. You see how that dye is really not biting in too deep. And that's kind of what you want to see. So the next step is to uh, put it on a knife. I've got this little Damascus uh, kind of a trailing point style skinner forged up. So here it is finished. You can see how the cracks uh, let the black dye soak in. Kind of gave that some uh, personality. See how that brown dye uh, Fit in a little deeper than the black. Come around here. All in all, we just took that uh, piece of bleached out antler and made something, I think, pretty nice out of it. Um, so, I hope that gave you some ideas.